Compassion is touching others with sensitivity and kindness. It's the ability to emphasize with people's very difficult situations without making rash judgments about their personal situation or even their choices in life. Compassion is putting concern for them into helpful action. In Jesus, we see just how great his compassion really is. His ministry was all about revealing God's mercy and grace to a world that didn't have a lot of mercy and grace nor compassion. Today we see Jesus' compassion in the lives of three different women. His compassion is all the more evident in these three cases, simply because they were women. Women were devalued in that culture and time period. They were almost an invisible class of people. Not a lot of concern or effort went in to taking care of women. And these three women were struggling with illness. And the one we heard this morning in the passage reading is dealing with sin. And the third one, the woman was dealing with grief. So let's see how Jesus touches their lives with compassion, which literally change, changes who they were. First, he meets a woman full of disease. This comes from Mark chapter 5. We are told that Jesus is on his way to heal a very sick girl. In fact, he is told that she is close to dying. And as he's making his way to this uh, girl's house, he suddenly feels a powerful surge leave him. And he turns and he asks his disciples, who just touched my cloak? And the disciples, they're perplexed. You're asking us in the midst of this crowd? How do we know? They really didn't know how to answer Jesus because they had, hadn't the slightest idea of all those people who actually touched Jesus' cloak because everyone was jostling in the crowd to get close to him. And looking around him, Jesus sees a woman kneeling by and he caught her eye and there she is cowering in fear and she confesses to him that indeed it was me who touched your cloak now it would be very easy for Jesus to rebuke this woman what are you doing? You've in interrupted my important and critical ministry. I am on my way to heal a dying girl. What are you doing here? But he does it. His heart goes out to this woman, knowing that she is in distress. And this woman tells Jesus about all her pain and anguish that she has and is experiencing in her life. She's afflicted with a medical condition of continuous bleeding. For the past 12 years, she has seen many a doctor. She has spent all her money trying to find a cure to her problem but nothing, and people's prejudice 
for her condition, simply cast her aside. They keep her at arm's length. She is unclean. She can't participate in anything religious. She's not to be close to anyone. And when Jesus hears this and sees her, he could not let her suffer in such shame and humiliation any longer. And he says, because of your resolve, and because of your assertive faith in me and my power. Remember, she sought him out. Jesus said, daughter, you are now healed. You are made whole. I give you your life back. No more to be unclean. The difference compassion makes for a woman full of disease. Even in that illness, there is healing or salvation in Jesus. Second, we need a woman full of adultery. This is the familiar passage which was read for us this morning. But this passage has a serious problem. The problem is it does not really belong in John's Gospel. Because we know that it is a later addition. And how do we know that? Because all the earlier manuscripts, all the early good manuscripts, they do not contain this story or this passage. And when the manuscripts later on pick up this story, it's not always found at John 8. It's found in different locations. So we know that originally it was not in John's Gospel. And when you look at your Bible, it's set aside or set apart somehow. Whether it's italicized, or it's in brackets, or if it's in lines, or it's footnoted. It's telling us this passage is different. However, when you read this story, it truly reveals the compassion of Jesus. And that's why they still include it in your Bible. We are told in this story that the uh, Pharisees actually caught a woman in the very act of committing adultery. How they did it, they're not telling us. But the picture is, they're there, and they see it. And so I've always wondered about their detective practices when it comes to this story here. But once they catch this woman in adultery, they drag her literally. And she probably doesn't have much covering her, but they drag her unmercifully before Jesus. And you've got to see the picture how she is just cowering down in kind of a lump. She is totally exposed in front of all those indignant men. And everyone is staring at her in utter disgust. And these Pharisees now demand that Jesus render a judgment upon her. They say, tell us, what should we do with her? Because they knew the Roman or the Jewish law demands that she be stoned. What we don't get told here is, so is the man. And he's not even mentioned here. Where is he? 
So the law says stoner. However, the Romans would not permit such a religious execution. Only they could do the capital punishment. So if Jesus says, let's follow the law on stoner, he's in trouble with the Romans. If he says, well, set her free, that's a Roman problem. He's in trouble with the law of God. But Jesus takes the time to look at her humiliation, her utter embarrassment, and her total shame. And his heart goes out to her, knowing she is truly in distress. Jesus removes himself from the horns of their dilemma by simply saying, he who is without sin, you go and pick up the stone and cast it at her. And after a while, slowly these men begin to realize the magnitude of what Jesus said. And they start leaving. The older ones first, and then again comes down to the youngest. Writing in the dirt, he looks up and asks the woman, where are your accusers? She says, they're all gone. There is no one here left to condemn me. And Jesus said, neither do I. Go, live your life. You're free, but sin no more. In Jesus' compassion, he changed her life. The difference compassion makes for a woman or any person full of sin, even in our sin, there is forgiveness in the compassion of Jesus. Third, Jesus meets a woman full of sorrow. When you read the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, Luke tells a heart-touching story about the widow of Nain. Jesus is out traveling with his disciples, and there is a huge crowd around him, and they're out walking in the country. And they approach this small village of Nain. And Jesus sees this large funeral procession making its way out of town to bury a young man. His mother, a widow, is now faced with burying her only child, her only son, which is not a good situation for any mother at any time at any place. When Jesus sees this widow, he sees within her her deep anguish, her grief, her yearning. And Jesus' heart, Jesus' heart goes out to her, knowing that she is truly in distress without a husband, and now without her only son, her life has not much of a future. There is no one who is able to support her. She is left alone and with nothing. And this death has dealt her another cruel and horrible calamity in her life. It's 
pretty much hopeless for her. Yet with such tender compassion, Jesus simply goes up to her and tells this mother, don't cry. I am now here with you. Then he goes to the burial briar and simply commands, get up. And this dead man sits up, begins to talk, and he is now alive. And then Jesus continues with his mother. Mother, I return to you, your son. He is fully well, he is fully functional, and through him I have restored your life back to normal. I give you hope. In his graciousness, Jesus touches a life in much suffering. The difference compassion makes for a woman or for anyone full of grief and sorrow. Even in the midst of death, there is life and there is hope in Jesus. Lessons that we can learn from this sermon. Jesus is our example for living a redeemed life, a life of faith. As his disciples and as he is our master, one of the things that we're supposed to do is to become just like him. Paul says, it is no longer I who live because we have died to our former self, but now it is Christ who lives within me. I am now to be like him. So if Jesus tells us to love, we love. If Jesus tells us to give, we give. If Jesus tells us to forgive, we forgive. If Jesus tells us to go that extra mile, we go another mile. If Jesus says to turn the other cheek, we are to turn the other cheek. Jesus' example for us today is to show compassion, to be kind, to be gentle, to be understanding of another person's situation. Being compassionate by, might be a whole lot more difficult than to simply ignore, neglect, or to pass judgment. Yet, one day, we might be in need of some compassion from others for ourselves. And that starts when we are willing to show compassion to others. And Jesus says, look what a little bit of compassion can do for a person. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, <clears throat> we just seen what it means to show compassion. We saw it done in the life and ministry of Jesus. It didn't bother him to change the course of his plans, to reach out and to touch a person's life who was in distress. May we become like Jesus and show compassion to others 
in our own lives. May we be like Jesus. For this we pray in your Son's name. Amen. Our hymn of commitment this morning is My Faith Looks Up to You. We believe Jesus, but are we willing to believe him enough to be like him? Shall